Devil is a liar and God is exalted. We'll never be defeated. We shall never be defeated. I sing it again. The devil is a liar and God is exalted. We shall never be defeated. We shall never be defeated. The devil is a liar. Devil is a liar. Say God is exalted. God is exalted. I shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. I declare it today. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil Come is on, a say. liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. I shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. Shall never be defeated. Never Come be on. defeated. Say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. Say God is exalted. God is we shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. We shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. We shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. We shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. 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 The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. We shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. We shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. We shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. I shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. I don't care what it looks like. Never be defeated. I don't care how I feel. Never be defeated. I always will. Never be defeated. I shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. Come what may. Never be defeated. Whatever storm arises. Never be defeated. I shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. 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 I don't care what he told you. The devil is a liar. I don't care what he showed you. Speak over yourself. God is exalted. We give you praise. We give you praise. Come on, one more time, y'all. Yeah. Say the devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. We shall never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. The devil is a liar. The devil is a liar. God is exalted. God is exalted. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Never be defeated. Because God. It's the greatest power We shall never Ever be defeated Help me say And because God Greatest power It's the greatest power Yo, you shall live and not we die shall never ever, be ever be defeated You shall live and not die Because God is the greatest power Yeah It's the greatest power Say we shall never we shall never, never be defeated. Never be One defeated. more time. And because God, and because God is the greatest power, the greatest power we shall never, we shall never ever be defeated. Ever be defeated. Whoa. Come on, somebody declare, I have the victory. Come on, say, I've 
got the victory. With Jesus, you have the victory. Hallelujah. somebody and give God some praise Hallelujah. if you know he's a mighty God Hallelujah. if you know he's an awesome God Hallelujah. if you know he's a never failing God yeah. if you know he's a God that looks beyond your faults yeah. and he continues to see your needs come on take a few moments and just begin to say Lord I love you Lord I honor you Lord I lift you up Lord, I magnify you. Come on, let's begin to pray right now. Somebody's had a rough week, but I want you to know God is in the room. Come on, begin to talk to him. Begin to speak well of him. Begin to tell him how much you love him. Come on, begin to tell him how awesome he is. Begin to tell him how mighty he is. Come on, somebody, lift up the name of Jesus. Lift him up, lift him up. Lift him up, lift him up, lift him up. Come on, let's pray. Father, we thank you right now. You know every situation. You know every circumstance. Lord, you know every struggle, every stronghold. You know what's been wrestling in our minds father we come to you right now saying we shall never be defeated not of our own strength not by our power not by our might but by your spirit father we accept victory right now victory over every circumstance victory over every obstacle victory over every challenge that we must face somebody just begin to shout victory in the atmosphere father we accept your victory right now in the name of jesus somebody's been feeling defeated but if you would just shout out victory 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 god we receive your healing now god we receive your deliverance now and we say satan we serve notice we rebuke you now in the name of Jesus. We cancel every assignment of the enemy right now. And we decree that no weapon that is formed over the people of God shall be able to prosper. We speak healing now. We release peace now. We release prosperity now. We release forgiveness now. And Father, everything that we've been holding on our own, Father, we take this moment right now to give it back to you. We won't be anxious this week because we know you're already there. We, we won't get tired. We won't give up because we know, God, that you are already on the case. We receive your victory now. Father, I pray for families right now cover our families now in the name of Jesus we plead the blood of Jesus upon everything that would try to come against our families I cancel every familial attack right now in the name of Jesus I need somebody to begin interceding right now in the name of Jesus we plead the blood the blood the blood the blood the blood over our children, the blood over our families, the blood over marriages, the blood, 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 the blood of Jesus. Cover now. Cover now. And Father, because you cover us, we decree that the death angel has to pass our homes in the name of Jesus. And Father, we won't be quiet, we won't be dignified, but we will open up our mouths right now and give you a praise. The people of God will open up our mouths right now and give you a praise. The people of God will open up our mouths right now 
and give your name the praise we won't settle for just a clapping of hands but we open our mouths and give your name the glory we give you the praise ah yes Lord hallelujah glory 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 there you are God we thank you release your glory now release your power now release hallelujah and somebody shout it is so somebody shout it is so somebody shout it is so now look at somebody and say it is so I don't know what you need from the Lord but begin to declare it is so I don't know what's going on on your job but just say it is so 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 I speak in faith hey glory to God it is so Somebody's getting strengthened right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, let's go right to the word of God before we get stuck right here. Mark chapter 10. Every person who can, I want you to stand for the word. Those who can't, it's all right. Mark 10. And Stephan actually started this sermon. If I can, I'm going to go a little bit further. If I have your permission. Hallelujah. It's been burning in my spirit for a little while now. Mark chapter 10. We'll start with verse 46. And they came to Jericho. And as he went out of Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway side begging. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many charged him that he should hold his peace. They told him to be quiet. They told him he was too loud. That he should be more dignified because God is here. But he cried the more a great deal. Thou son of David. Have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and commanded him to be called. And they called the blind man, saying unto him, Be of good comfort. Rise. He calleth thee. And he, casting away his garment, rose and came to Jesus. And Jesus answered and said unto him, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? The blind man said unto him, Lord, that I might receive my sight. And Jesus said unto him, Go thy way. Thy faith hath made thee whole. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus in the way and many charged him that he should hold his peace but he cried the more a great deal today's message is entitled whatever it takes I need somebody to just say that whatever it takes come on and give God a praise on the way to your seats whatever it takes whatever it takes. I remember trying to prove to my father how good of a driver I was. 
I was almost 16, and I wanted to make sure that I had my license in time for my 16th birthday. And so I was, I would ask him all the time, Dad, take me driving. Let me drive. And I had mastered driving down the street. I had mastered parallel parking. Some of y'all still struggle with that one. <laughs> I had mastered how to make a right turn and how to make a left turn. I had even mastered how to go through the intersections. And, and I understood that I first had to look left and to look right. I mastered all of these things. I thought I was a pretty good driver. I was doing well. I, I had mastered checking my mirrors. I knew to get in the car and to put on a seatbelt and to adjust all of the mirrors. I would look at the rear view mirror and make sure it was just right. I would look at the side view mirrors and, and make sure they were just right. They were at the right angle. And I was so meticulous that I even read the inscription on the mirror that said objects in the mirror uh, are closer than they appear. Uh, I'm going to give you a warning. That's not my, my, my stop, but I'm going to give you a warning because for some of us, as we get delivered, we forget how close we are to who we used to be. Some of us, as we get healed and as God begins to deliver us, we seem to get cocky and forget that you are just one phone call away from who you used to be. That you are just uh, one check away from being as broke as you used to be. That, that you are just one, uh, uh, one piece away from who you used to be. I need to talk to somebody who can be real today and say, I thank God for deliverance, but I'm careful every day because I know it don't take much to go back. Oh, y'all real quiet. I, I, I'm talking to somebody that has a real testimony. Not take, take off that church face for a minute and, and say, listen, I have to be careful with my words because I remember how I used to talk. I, I have to be careful when I look at my DMs because I remember there was a time where I used to answer them. I have to be careful with my temper because I know there was a time when I could not control my anger. Tell somebody you don't know the half of it. You, you look at me today and and you think that I have it together, but you have no clue what God has delivered me from. You, you don't know how I used to be, how I used to talk, what I used to be attracted to. But tell somebody, thank God that I've been saved. I thank God that I've been healed. I thank God that I've been delivered. Objects in the mirror are closer than they appear, but that, that wasn't it. I had mastered that. I saw the inscriptions, and it wasn't until one day he said, you think you're a good driver, let's, let's get on the freeway. I got on the freeway, I was so excited because now I get to go a little bit faster than I could on the streets. I was ready, or so I thought. It wasn't until I almost destroyed all of us in the car uh, simply because I forgot to check my blind spot. And my brothers and sisters, I need to talk to you because for some of us, we don't realize that all of us have some form of a blind spot. I know that you're trying to be, uh, uh, you, you act like you got it all together, but the truth of the matter is each and every one of us from the pulpit to the pew, we all have a blind spot. Maybe since y'all so quiet, I'll just have to walk a little bit further here. Maybe your blind spot has a name. Maybe your blind spot is that one female, that one guy that whenever they do something for some reason or another, you can never see it for what it truly is because you have gotten to a place where you want to see it the way that you want to see it. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Have you ever had a blind spot? Maybe your blind spot is your children and it takes you having to go up to the school and peek in the window until you believe that the teacher was telling you the truth the whole time that your child had been acting like a Tasmanian devil all through the room. Tell somebody we all have a blind spot. Maybe your blind spot is a circumstance. You're good most days, but, but all of us have something that will trigger us and get us to a place where we no longer see things clearly. Do you have a blind spot? 
I want you, if you're taking notes today, I want you to write that down. What is my blind spot? What, what is the area in my life that, that I don't see things as clear as I should? Everybody's telling me what it is, but I'm arguing them because I don't see it the way that they see it. Tell somebody, check your blind spot. I found out while I was on that freeway that I almost lost my life. All because I didn't do one small thing of checking my blind spot. And some of your relationships are in trouble right now because you won't check your blind spot. Some of your children are in trouble right now because you won't check your blind spot. Some of you are being tormented in your mind because you ignored every warning. You ignored every warning sign all because you wouldn't check your blind spot. Somebody help me preach this today and say check your blind spot. You got to check your blind spot. We've We've gotten so confident in, the, in managing the well-lit areas of our lives that we forget that all of us have a blind spot. All of us have something that we don't see as clearly as we should. That's why friendships are important. Get you some friends that won't just tell you what you want to hear. Get you some friends that will tell you what you need to hear. Y'all real quiet on that point. Y'all want people that will always tell you how pretty you are, how anointed you are, how nice you are, how wonderful you are, and how everybody has done you wrong. But you need a friend that will say you had some faults in the matter too. There were some things that you could have done differently. Tell your neighbor, I need folk that will help me check my blind spot. I bring that to your attention because today we're dealing with a man by the name of Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is blind and, and we find him uh, on the outskirts of Jericho and, and Bartimaeus is on the outskirts of Jericho on the side begging. We find him on the outskirts of Jericho. You got to understand that Jericho is about 15 miles northeast of Jerusalem near the Jordan River. It's known as one of the oldest inhabited cities of the world. Jericho was a nice place to be. Maybe it was even a nice vacation spot. The Bible describes Jericho as the city of palm trees. Maybe Jericho back then uh, was what Dubai is for us now. It was a wonderful place to go and to visit. It was a place that had a whole lot of uh, tourists coming. It was a place that looked real expensive. It was the place to be. Jericho was known for attracting rich tourists. It was known uh, for being a place uh, full of affluent people and others. And so Bartimaeus positioned himself on the edge of a, of a great place. Bartimaeus positioned himself on the edge of a great place. Why do I bring that to your attention? Because for many of us, many of us are in a season right now where because of our beggar mentality, we have found ourselves on the cusp, on the brink of a great place, but we won't go in. I wish somebody would understand this with me. You are just that close. I want you to encourage yourself and say, don't give up right now. You are just that close. Don't give in. Don't, don't throw in the towel. You are closer than you've ever been before. I believe that's a good place to give God a praise. Just the fact that you made it this close to your next miracle. Now, I need to know, is there somebody in here today that can say, I'm just that close to my next miracle. I am just that close to my dream job. I am just that close to getting my finances together. Who am I talking to in here? That and say you are wondering why I can't be quiet in church why can't I be all dignified but you don't know what it took for me to get here I need to talk to some folks that know what it's like to fight against hell and high water just to get this close Bartimaeus is on the cusp of a great place he's on the brink of a great place he is just that close but because he's blind and because he has grown accustomed to begging and getting handouts, he never walks into the great place. He just gets, he becomes okay with sitting on the sidelines. 
I'm talking to somebody in here who has been on the sidelines for way too long, but you feel in your spirit it's time to get back in the game. Who am I talking to that said, listen, I have watched other people get blessed, but, but it's my turn. I've watched other people get the jobs, but it's my turn. I've watched other people get the degrees, but it's my turn. I need to talk to somebody that said, listen, I'm not selfish, but it's just my time. Give God a praise if you know that you feel Feel something in your spirit. You dream about it. You daydream about it. You talk about it. Something is on the brink of breaking in your life. Bartimaeus is on the highway side begging. And I have to ask you today, are you comfortable on the sidelines? I have to ask you today, have you become comfortable Letting everybody else get what they need from the Lord, but you're just comfortable supporting their needs. Have you become so comfortable working for a company even though God has placed a company on the inside of you? Have you become so comfortable doing what everybody else wants you to do that you forget that God has created you to be different? Some of us are comfortable on the sidelines. Some of you are comfortable with being a side chick. Some of us are comfortable. Tell me, don't, don't get quiet. You all right? Some of y'all got upset. Uh, some of us have become comfortable. You know he ain't yours. <laughs> uh, but, but as long as he'll call you sometimes, oh my God. As long as every once in a while he'll spend a few hours with you. As long as he sends you a nice cash app or two. You have become comfortable being on the sidelines. And some of us have become comfortable. That job takes up all your time, but it'll never finance your dreams. Tell somebody, you're too comfortable on that job. Some of us have been comfortable. You've become comfortable in your marriage, so comfortable that your marriage takes a backseat to church. So comfortable that your marriage takes a backseat to your job. So comfortable that your marriage takes a backseat to everything else, and then you wonder why your marriage is in shambles. Tell somebody you're too comfortable. And some of us are beggars and we don't even know it. See, you think that the only definition of being a beggar is somebody who will every once in a while ask for a couple dollars. See, blind Bartimaeus was a beggar and he needed money. He needed some type of resources to get him to where he was trying to go. But I want you to understand that, that, that that's not the only type of beggar. Some of us don't beg for money. We beg for attention. Some of us, uh, we beg for somebody to see how good we look in a post. And, and, and you're so desperate for attention that you will ask them, did you see my picture? Well, why didn't you like it then? You, you are becoming a beggar of attention. Are y'all all right today? Y'all getting real quiet. Uh, I, I need to talk to somebody that knows that you can be a beggar and not realize it. So you beg for attention. You beg for somebody to affirm you. You beg for somebody to notice your outfit. You beg uh, for somebody to hear your clip of you playing an instrument on Instagram, not understanding that you don't have to wait on somebody else to celebrate you. The first step to your celebration ought to be you celebrating yourself. I wonder, is there somebody in here today that can say, I'm tired of waiting on other folks to acknowledge what God is doing in me. I'm ready to acknowledge it for myself is there somebody in here who has mastered the art of celebrating yourself y'all got real quiet on celebrating yourself you you can celebrate yourself you can take yourself to the movies you can take yourself to dinner you can be your own mcm you can be your own wcw tell somebody i can celebrate myself David was in a tough situation and he got to a place where everybody around him was blaming him for something that wasn't his fault. And he got to a place where he said, Lord, sometimes I got to encourage myself. And I'm talking to somebody in here today that can say, I need a David's anointing today where I'm no longer waiting on somebody to encourage me. I can encourage myself. I can look at myself in the mirror and say, boy, you look good today. 
today. You put that suit together. You're looking all right. You're looking like a snack today. I can encourage myself. (laughs) I can encourage myself. Bartimaeus is on the highway side begging. Bartimaeus is on the highway side begging. And as I was uh, contemplating on this scripture, as I was uh, uh, looking at this scripture over and over, I I thought about it, and you really got to look at this scripture with some context. Uh, You got to look at it, and you got to have context to understand that in this day and in this age, the reason he was on the highway side begging is because when you are blind uh, you have no means to take care of yourself. He was considered to be handicapped but there were no disability checks. He was considered to be a man who did not have the means to take care of himself and so in his mind he had a right to be a beggar. And some of us have got that same entitlement today. You think you got a right. To expect from other people what you don't even provide for yourself. You think you got a right that somebody's got to call and give you a good morning message. You think you got a right that somebody should pay your bills if they want to date you. You think you got a right. I'm trying to talk through this thing without offending nobody. But look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, just because you have a right don't mean you're doing the right thing. And some of us have fallen to a place where we only do, we only allow ourselves to hold to the opinion of what we think we got a right to do. Don't you know you can have every right and still do wrong? Don't you know that you can have every right in the world to be mad at them, but because you're a Christian, it's wrong. You got every right to say, listen, I know God for myself. I don't need nobody to preach to me. I don't need nobody to lay hands on me, but you still need to be in church. You got a right to stay home, but you can still do the wrong thing. Why y'all get so quiet on me? Many of us have found ourselves hiding behind what we have a right to do, and so we keep on doing the wrong thing. You had a right to be bitter after the way they treated you. But your relationship with God ought to told you that you got a right to forgive as well. You got a right to be upset at the folk who, who you got a right to be defensive because folks were fighting you on every side. But, but when you give it to God, you say, listen, I got a right to be upset, but I'm going to do it God's way. Many of us have hid behind what we have a right to do. And it's killed our marriages. You had a right to be upset, but because you didn't forgive, your marriage is on the rocks. You had a right to cut that friend off after what they said to you, but forgiveness says God didn't cut you off. You had a right to cuss them out, but the God we serve says we don't speak like that. Blessings and curses should not come from the same mouth. How many of us have hid behind what we have a right to do and we found ourselves doing the wrong thing? Bartimaeus had every right to be on the highway side begging. But him being on the highway side begging doesn't mean it was the right thing to do. You want to depend on other folks for the rest of your life? Do you want to depend on... When other folks want to bless you, when other folks want to give you a ride to and fro, when other folks want to tell you how much they appreciate you, do you really want to find yourself bound by the opinion of others for the rest of your life? Bartimaeus is on the highway side begging. The Bible says he heard that Jesus was passing by. And all of a sudden, he decided, I'm going to try a different approach. And there's somebody in here today that you have tried the same approach over and over and over, and you've gotten the same results. But tell your neighbor, it's time for a different approach. It's time for a different strategy. I want you to write that in your notes. It's time to try things another way. It's time for you to do things differently. Is there anybody that's praying today for a divine for divine direction? 
Lord, give me a divine strategy. I know what they said I could do. I know what others said I could do, but I want a divine strategy. I want a strategy that comes straight from heaven. I want something different. The Bible says that Bartimaeus is on the highway side begging, and he sees Jesus passing by. The Bible says, or he hears Jesus, excuse me, passing by. And the Bible says he tries a different approach. He starts yelling out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Everybody else is doing their own thing. He's still on the highway side begging, but he keeps yelling out, Jesus. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. He, he yelled it until somebody in the crowd got irritated. He yelled it until somebody in the crowd got agitated. And I'm talking to somebody in here that's ever been in Bartimaeus' position. Because nobody said anything as long as you were dependent on them. Nobody had anything to say as long as you were a beggar. I'm not making this up. It's right here in the text. Nobody complained about Bartimaeus being entitled. Nobody complained about Bartimaeus asking for alms and asking for handouts. They did not get irritated until he decided to become dependent. I wish there was somebody in here that, that would help me to preach. Nobody had a problem with you as long as you had to depend on them, as long as you had to call them, as long as there was something that they had to do for you. But when you decided, I want to be independent, I can call on God for myself, I can make changes for myself, all of a sudden, now all of the critics are coming out. I'm talking to somebody in here today. Uh, you acting quiet, but you know that you've been frustrated lately because as long as you were in sin, nobody had anything to say to you. As, as long as you were cheating and walking around creeping, nobody had anything to say. It wasn't until you decided that I want to live holy. It wasn't until you decided I want to stop talking like that. It wasn't until you decided I wanted to start tithing. It wasn't until you decided I wanted a better life. Who am I talking to in here that can say, I thank God that my critics are a reminder that I must be doing something right. If you ain't got no critics, you can be quiet for the rest of the sermon. But I need to take a break just for about 15 seconds for somebody that knows what it's like to be criticized, to be ostracized, to be talked about, to be rumored about. Talk to me, somebody that knows I'm must be on to something. Bartimaeus makes a decision. He says, listen, what I've been trying ain't been working for me. Who I've been dating ain't been working for me. The type of jobs I've been securing have not been working for me. How I respond has not been working for me. And I'm talking to somebody today that is understanding you need to try something different. If you want a different result, you got to try something different. Bartimaeus starts yelling out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. They charged him that he should hold his peace. They told him, you're too loud. They told him that you're doing too much. They told him that you post too much. They told him that your clothes are too loud. They told him that your response, your change, uh, you ain't got to do all of that. You don't have to act like that. I'm talking to somebody that knows what it's like and you can hear the voice of your critics even right now. But I wish there was somebody that would say, I'm going to do like Bartimaeus and I'm going to live louder. I'm going to get louder until I drown out my critics. Y'all, y'all, the praise that you have right now wouldn't drown out a mouse. Uh, but I'm talking to somebody that knows what I'm talking about. And, and you're saying, let me give God a praise that's bigger than what I've been going through. A praise that's bigger than my circumstance. A praise. Can we take a praise break right here and right now and say, Lord, I'm going to give you a praise that's bigger than my debt. A praise that's bigger than my problem. A praise that's bigger than the rumors. I wish there was somebody in here that could give God a real praise, not a 
pity pat, not a let me pat God on the back like he did one good thing. But I wish there was somebody that would be desperate enough to say, I'm tired of being on the sidelines. And if it takes one praise to get me out of my situation, let me praise him right now. I wish somebody would stand to your feet and say, Lord, this is the praise that's going to heal me. This is the praise that's going to get me out of this. This is the praise that's going to save my family. I wish there was somebody that would open up your mouth and cry out to God and say, forget about who's on my road. Can I tell you in authentic praise, you can test it because it'll start irritating imps that are in the building. Don't you know the folk that talked about Bartimaeus were following Jesus, but they couldn't know God like they said they did. Because praise should never be problematic for a believer. And I want you to know your praise that you give right now is going to expose the enemy. The praise that you give right now is going to make demons tremble. The praise that you give right now. Tell somebody whatever it takes. If it takes me screaming by myself, whatever it takes. If it takes me crying all night long, whatever it takes. If it takes me lifting up my hands, whatever it takes. If it takes me walking off that job, whatever it takes. And I need to talk to somebody here that can say, I've been low living too long. I've been living on the sidelines too long. Yeah, but is there anybody here that will give God a praise? A praise that's bigger than what you're going through. I wish there was somebody that will give God whatever it takes. My hallelujah. Whatever it takes. My thank you, Jesus. Whatever it takes. My Lord, you're worthy whatever it takes and I'm talking to somebody and you sitting there like you're looking like a bump on the rock but tell your neighbor get up you've been down too long I'm still in the text if you don't see the Bible says that when the man gave God a praise the Bible says Jesus stood still and commanded the same folk that told him to shut up were told to tell him to get up y'all missed that revelation I'll preach it to myself if I have to yeah, but the same folk that told Bartimaeus to shut up were the same folk that had to go back and tell him get up and I'm on assignment today to tell somebody in here it's time for you to get up Get up out of depression. Get up. Get up out of low living. Get up. Get up out of what you've been in. Get up. Get up out of poverty. Get up. Get up out of bitterness. Get up. I wish there was somebody that would help me preach this thing. Look down your row and say, I don't know what you've been down. I don't know why you're on the highway side, but tell your neighbor, it's time to get up. My money's coming up. My finances is coming up. My family's coming up. Yeah, get up. I wish there was somebody that would get excited with me and say whatever it takes. I'll think outside of the box if I have to. Whatever it takes. I'll apologize first if I have to. Whatever it takes, I'll start investing my money. Somebody say, whatever it takes, whatever it takes, I'm going after God. And when I get to Jesus, he's going to deliver me from my blind spot. Tell your neighbor, God is delivering you from your blind spot. God is delivering you from your sickness. God is delivering you from low self-esteem. 
Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, neighbor, say, neighbor, yeah. is there somebody here that will give God a praise and say, whatever it takes. Now listen, I'm done preaching, but I need you to take the next 30 seconds and give God a praise that's bigger than any praise you've ever given him. If you're used to clapping, scream. If you're used to screaming, dance. If you're used to dance and run. But tell somebody, I got a different praise for a different season. I got a different praise because I'm expecting different results. Somebody give him glory. Come on, make some noise. 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 I know it's out of your comfort zone. I know it's not what you're used to doing. But if you really need God's attention, with those hands uplifted, open up your mouth and give God some praise. Your praise is going to yield results. That's what I hear in the spirit. Your praise is going to yield results. I know you've been comfortable. And I know you've been on the sidelines. But tell somebody your next praise is about to get you back in the game. Tell somebody get in the game. Get focused. Get your healing. Get your marriage. Get your family, get your children, get your finances. Tell somebody, I'm coming for everything that God has for me. Get it back. Whatever it takes, whatever it takes, whatever I got to do, Whatever sacrifices I need to make, whatever friendships I have to cancel, nothing is getting between me and my next blessing. Today as you're standing to your feet. My prayer today is that many of you would realize that the change you need starts with you. My prayer today is that you would realize that there is power in your praise. It's bigger than a shout. It's bigger than a dance. And some of us are more comfortable moving our feet than we are moving our mouths. Nobody loves a good shout as much as me, but you got to learn. Listen, in the midnight hour, you got to learn how to open your mouth and call on Jesus. I was at the hospital on yesterday. A family that is very close to me called and asked that I would come and anoint the body of a man who had had a stroke. The doctors, I plainly heard them state that he would be paralyzed on the right side. But as we were praying and as we were anointing his body, I want y'all to hear this. While we were praying, his right arm shot up. The arm that they said would never move again. The arm that they said would never have any activity again. And I'm talking to somebody in here today that that people have looked at your life and said, you'll be paralyzed in that area. You'll never have children. You'll never have a meaningful relationship. But I want you to know that this is a season where God is going to shut the mouths of your enemies. 
and they're going to have to take back what they said. Tell somebody it's about to happen. It's about to happen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Somebody just say, it's about to happen. Somebody just shout out fourth quarter miracles. Tell somebody, it ain't too late for God to bless me. It's not too late. Get that thing in your spirit. I'm trying to get out of here, but get it in your spirit. It's not too late for, to get the promotion. It's not too late to fix what I messed up. It's not too late for God to turn it around. Whatever it takes. Glory to God. There may be someone who's streaming today. There may be someone who's standing here today. And you need to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. I feel the Holy Ghost in here. Now I want you to know this is your time. This is your moment. Whether you're streaming or whether you are here. I want you to know you have an opportunity. If you need a church home. You have an opportunity. If you just want to begin to build a relationship with Jesus Christ and you're not yet ready to join a church, you have that opportunity. All you have to do is wave your hand. Those who are streaming, just place it in the comments. Hallelujah. Clap your hands for every person who continues to follow Jesus Christ. While you're standing, actually, you may take your seats at this time. I want you to begin to prepare for the offering. I'm going to prepare for offering. If you need an envelope, lift your hand. If you are giving electronically, you can take a picture of the QR code on the back of the pew. Or you can go to Cash App. I see a hand right here. I want to make sure. And we need an envelope, I believe, right here. You need an envelope? Yes. Okay. Praise God. It's not too late. And I'm going to accept personal responsibility for my miracle by doing whatever it takes. Hallelujah. Now listen, we are a tithing church. That's how we are. We've been able to sustain ourselves. That's how God continues to bless this house. It's because we take tithing very seriously. And I thank God that many of us have seen and yielded fruit from just being obedient. Tell somebody, it pays off to be obedient. Do I have any tithers that know it pays off to be obedient? Hallelujah. Praise God. I want you to take this time to do that. When you are done filling out your envelope, you can let us know by standing, and then we'll have a word of prayer. If you're done giving electronically, you can stand. I'm going to ask for every person who can to stand as we bless the offering. Praise the Lord. We're just waiting for a few more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want you to take that electronic device, I want you to take that envelope, and I want you to lift it in the air. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you, Lord, for reminding us that we don't have to have a beggar's mentality that we have to be willing to do whatever it takes to get your attention because every miracle comes from you. 
Now, God, someone gives sacrificially today. Bless them. Someone is tithing today. Bless them. Someone is giving for the first time today. Bless them. Bless every gift and every giver. And Father, because we are willing and obedient, hallelujah, we will eat of the good of the land. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said, amen. Amen. You may be seated once you've given your envelope to our officer. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're praying for the Harge family. I've been with them most of this week, me and my family. Brother Journey, of course. We're praying that the Lord would continue to strengthen trustee Ed, Ed Harge. I said Ed. Trustee Ed Harge. That God would continue to show himself strong. Amen. We're also praying for Kiara. Amen. We understand she was taken to urgent care this morning. But she's covered. And we know that she is healed in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Minister Hibbert is coming at this time and he'll give us some announcements and then we will be dismissed in Jesus' name. Well, let's take communion first. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Our officers are coming at this time as we prepare for communion. I'm going to ask for our ministers to line up on the side wall over here. And you guys can come around that way. Shoot. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for these sacraments that we bless. We remember your sacrifice. We remember what you endured on the cross. And we remember that we were not worthy of what you did for us. We didn't deserve it. But you loved us anyway. Father, as we 
commune together. Remind us that we are compelled to live better because we are no longer under the stain of sin. Your blood has power. Your blood heals. Your blood delivers. So wash us, Lord. We take this time to examine ourselves. The areas where we've fallen short. The areas where we knew to do right, but we chose another direction. Forgive us. Wash us clean. Give us a brand new start. The old things are passed away. And because of your blood, behold, all things are become new. Hallelujah. We receive the newness of Jesus Christ right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. And all of God's people said, Amen. prepare to take communion we understand that this bread is a representation of the body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ it was broken for you and for many take it break it and eat it likewise we take the cup a representation of the blood that was shed for you and for me. As often as we commune together, we do it remembering the suffering, the agony, and the pain Jesus Christ endured so that we might have a right to the tree of life. Let us commune together.
Hallelujah. Come on, somebody give God a praise. Hallelujah. Clap your hands and give God glory. Praise the name of our God. Very quickly, we will have our announcements, and then we will be dismissed in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise in this house. Hallelujah. Whatever it takes. Amen. These are your announcements for Sunday, October 3rd, 2021. Next week, October 10th, please join us for our second pastoral anniversary. Why don't we make some noise? <laughs> Hallelujah. It is going to be during our 1.30 worship service, so please get here on time because you may not have a seat. Amen. We have our guest preacher, Pastor Frank Harris Jr. from Second Canaan Missionary Baptist Church. He will be bringing his church, so we invite all of RLC to join together in this celebration, okay? So we're going to have two churches in one house, amen? All right, and then we have a special guest musical artist, uh, John Houston Smith, who will be here with us that will be uh, rendering selections as well. Um, so I want everybody to make sure that you are in the place. Turn to your neighbor and say, be in the place. Because we got some special stuff planned. Amen. So our second announcement is Harvest Family Fun Fest. That's the name, Harvest Family Fun Fest. October 31st, immediately following the 130 worship service. Okay, so we are going to have a chili cook-off. We're going to have a DJ, a bounce house, and lots of other family-friendly activities. We will be serving food during this event. There will be a candy giveaway for our kids. We will need all of RLC, all our volunteers, to sign up with myself, Minister Stephen Hibbett, or Sister Shamari Hamlet. Amen, Shamari, raise your hand so they know who you are. Um, we will need... We also need candy donations. Everybody say, bring some candy. Okay, they can be brought. <laughs> Amen, Mom. They can be brought to the church, and you can uh, deposit them in the back. We'll have a box in the back. We've already started gathering donations, okay? So please, please, please be uh, a participant in both of those events. All right, let us rest on our feet. Let us stand so that we may be dismissed for the rest of our day. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we thank you for this day. God, thank you, Lord God, that you showed up, Lord God, in a mighty way. Thank you, Lord God, that your power is what helps us, Lord God, to move, Lord God, from strength to strength, faith to faith, God, and from glory to glory. Now, God, we ask, Lord God, for your traveling mercies. Lord God, ask, we ask you, Lord God, to protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. Lord God, we ask, Lord God, that whatever it is that's in our way, God, we're going to do whatever it takes. And God, we give you all the glory, the honor, and the praise that is due your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Thank God and amen. Amen. God bless you and we'll see you on Wednesday.